Hello QST readers and ARRL members worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, KE0OG, and I author the Ask Dave column in QST. This is the supplementary video for the April 2025 edition. One of the questions was about Near Vertical Incident Skywave Propagation, or NVIS, a very popular mode used by a lot of people, and they can use the lower bands, like 80 and 40 meters, to communicate very easily with people who are within about a 200 mile radius. So what I thought I'd do to go beyond what's in the printed part is to talk about NVIS and to take a look at how high your antenna should be to make that work. Usually NVIS is done with horizontal polarization because vertical polarization from a vertical antenna doesn't reach directly overhead. And when this thing says near vertical, it means that, oh, about 70 to 90 degrees up. Let's take a look at the charts. This chart shows the basic idea of NVIS. You have a transmitter over here. Maybe it's at the bottom of a valley and it transmits up to the ionosphere and it comes back down. It's not quite vertical, but near vertical. Near vertical incidence just means the angle that it strikes the ionosphere. Okay, and it can come down to this station also in a valley if need be could be anywhere along in here, and it gets about out to here and then it peters out after that. You don't get much. So let's take a look at how we can find what frequencies to use. This is an ionogram. It's from the UK Solar System Data Center, and it's the latest ionogram for a station at Chilton in the UK. Now I picked this one because it's current for today. Now the 1930 is UTC, so it's already just about dark over there. Now there's some stuff right down here I want to pay particular attention to, and so do you. This is the distance from the transmitting station in kilometers. At 100, 200, 400, you note that the maximum usable frequency is slightly above 40 megahertz. Okay, so you may very well be able to use 40 megahertz. Now, if you want to go longer distances, you'll have to go way out to much higher frequencies. So this is where we're talking about for near vertical incident skywave propagation. This is the elevation plot of, and happens to be a 20 meter dipole, but it doesn't matter what it is. This is a standard dipole, meaning it's half wavelength long and half wavelength high. And this is the elevation at which this puts the most energy into this part here. You'll note that if you go higher in frequency, this middle part will start to come up and you'll start creating additional side lobes over here. The 3 dB beam width is 41.5 degrees. And that goes from 3 dB down to 3 dB down, okay? Now, if we go much lower, and again, it doesn't matter, I'm scaling by wavelength. The height is 0 0.08 lambda. So you take lambda, which is 80 meters in this case, multiply it by about a tenth, and that's eight meters high, okay? And you see that most of the signal goes straight up. It's got 9.31 dBi gain. The beam width is 94 degrees, so it's 3 dB down here to 3 dB down here. Now you'll see this nicely covers all the distances that you can get for near vertical. And the part of the propagation that doesn't go very far is left out here because the antenna is so low. Whereas if we go back to that original one, we see that the beam width is 41.5 and it's from down here to up here. Okay, so none of this is going up to the ionosphere at full level. Now we go from here and we take a slightly higher dipole, and this is at 0.16 at lambda, and we see that the beam width starts to spread out a little bit. The gain is a little less in the upper direction, but you do get more over out here. Now we can go even higher. 
let's go up to 0.24. This is a quarter wavelength. A quarter light wavelength at 80 meters is 20 meters, still 66 feet high. So you see you've got quite a range over which you can put this antenna up. Here the beam width is 118 degrees, so it's way over here to over here. Now the important thing to remember about this is that if you spread the beam width out, you lose gain. Okay, because that same amount of power has to fill a bigger space. So here's 7.3 dBi. Here we're going all the way up to 0.28 lambda, it's quarter wavelength. Note up here that we're starting to get the thing to come down from the zero dB. Here's actually your maximum right here and is 6.81 dBi. Let's go up here. Now note that we're 4 dB down, okay? 4 dB down from maximum here, and we're way out here on the edge. This is getting to the point where it's not a good NVIS antenna. We'll do one more chart where we go to very nearly half wave high, and you'll notice you're down about 12 or 13 dB from going up here in the several S units, okay? So what you're looking for to make this work is an antenna that points pretty much up with a fairly wide beam width, and you've got 9.31 uh, dBi, okay, decibels over an isotropic radiator. Now, mind you, the ground is down here and acts to reflect the signal, so that's why we get so high above the isotropic antenna. So this is sort of a challenge for you to figure out how far you can go, usually 80 meters at night after sunset, 40 meters during the day, but look at an ionogram first and, and see where things are right at the moment. You'll see conditions change dramatically at sunset and sunrise. And then uh, stretch out an antenna or two and see how far you can go. I have used NVIS to communicate all the way from here on the western slope across the Rocky Mountains all the way to Denver using NVIS and it worked very well. We were doing this for a simulated emergency test. So, there you have it, a little bit about NVIS that expands upon what is in the printed S. Dave column. And so we will next meet for the May issue, and until then, 73.